In the distant past, there were advancements in technologies that allowed the development of man into a superior being. But these things did not have the capacity to survive the ages. These advanced things are victim to time. Consider that the only materials that have survived humanity's last golden period are the most solid materials available to us. And we call the period from which these things have survived simply as the Stone Age. You must consider, however, that the Stone Age was not the accumulation of our people suddenly being able to work very heavy and dense material, but it is the stone artifacts that have survived and outlived all the other material that was formed during this period. This includes our ability to understand how to survive and indeed how to repurpose the material available to us as the cataclysmic event of the past took hold. Wait till you hear this. Modern blades are made of steel, right? Easy, light, perfect tool. So would you think that a stone edge blade would have the same effects? It is entirely unclear how humans first conceived of the idea of using stone and shaping it as a weapon or a tool. But could it be possible that we are simply making these things from stone because we lost the technical know-how to cast them from steel? If our society today collapsed, if millions were wiped out by a sudden blow from an unforeseen event, how would we react and just how long would it be before the things we take for granted began to seriously decay beyond recognition? The answer to that question is not thousands of years or even hundreds. Corrosion begins to occur in metal within two days of exposure to the elements. This means that anything with metal present would be gone sooner than you would think. That would include buildings and structures that were no longer being maintained and anything at all. The reason we are saying this, guys, is because it is only stone material that can survive, and the depictions present within certain stone reliefs would suggest an overwhelming interest in technology by the ancients. Researchers, including Polish archaeologists, discovered 14 15,000-year-old traces of human presence in the Hukava Caves in the Beliansky Tatras. These are stone blades used by hunters. Until now, no prehistoric items had ever been found in any of the Tatra Caves. Dozens of stone blades that have survived completely or in fragments, originally embedded on poles that have not survived until our time. We recovered some of the blades from the remnants of a hearth, says Professor Powell Valde Nowak from the Institute of Archaeology at the Jagiellonian University in Krakow. According to the discoveries, it is the first Tatra cave in which traces of prehistoric human presence have been captured. They come from the end of the Ice Age, when the ice sheet began to disappear from the northern areas of today's Poland, approximately 15 to 14,000 years ago. The traces we have discovered show that prehistoric hunters had lived in the caves for a long time. Scientists have been looking for traces of prehistoric human presence in Tatra Caves since the 19th century, until now without success. For example, the Mangora Cave in the Polish Tatras was selected for research, but the excavations carried out in that cave before World War II did not bring the expected results. In the cave above the artifacts from the end of the Ice Age, the Slavic-Polish team also found 15th and 16th century fragments of clay vessels, as well as coins from World War II. This year's excavation, co-financed by the National Science Center, will continue and we just wanted to bring this to your attention, guys, because anything dating from this time period of between 12 and 14,000 years ago could shed some light on what exactly was going on. We are told we lived in caves before intelligence made us think differently. What placed us in the caves in the first place, however, is what we are thinking. If we were sent back to a survival period in the distant past by an ancient cataclysm, then living in caves as opposed to living in the open would be the safest plan. Only a chosen few would go and hunt food and bring it back to the haven of the cave. It all points out that we were surviving not developing during this period, but simply surviving either the aftermath of destruction or preparing for the coming event. There are underground cities all over the world. In Turkey, there is a vast complex of cities that are said to be connected to other parts of the world, including one hypothesis that they are reaching as far north as Scotland. You would have to consider that these were bunkers 
rather than early habitation. Gobekli Tepe is a prehistoric archaeological site in southern Turkey that has captured the attention of the world by how advanced it is for its age, an astonishing 12,000 years old on the conventional timeline. This has required conventional scholars to readjust their thinking about the capabilities of ancient people because, according to their worldview, humans should not have been able to produce carved stone monuments like these that far back in time. Sites like Gobekli Tepe or Derinkuyu are showing us overwhelmingly that these people who lived during this period were incredibly advanced. The only remnants of their advancements to have survived are in stone. And these things are anomalous to us because we simply don't believe the truth we are confronted with. What do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.